uh, welcome to my youtube channel i'm your presenter mr mlenga so here i've got 2022 mathematics paper one for internal candidates so i want us to go through the entire paper so i'm going to answer questions from one up to question 23 with clear examples so let's see how best we can answer this paper so we have our question one right here evaluate in brackets 3 over 2 raise the power of a negative 2 so they want us to evaluate 3 over 2 in brackets raise the power of a negative 2 so you can't evaluate this if it's having a negative power so first thing you need to get rid of the negative power so that it becomes a positive so how can you do that um, I'll take you back to the laws of indices if you have something like this, if you have uh, 1 over 4 raised to the power of a negative 3. So the way you can evaluate this, you are just going to find the reciprocal of 1 over 4. And the reciprocal of 1 over 4, it will change like 4 over 1. So the moment you find the reciprocal, this power will be a positive. So you are going to do it like this. So we are going to use this principle to apply it here. So what you are going to do is this. So the reciprocal of 3 over 2, they will just interchange. The 2 will become the numerator. The 3 will become the denominator. So we are going to have 2 over 3 in brackets. Raise the power of what? A 2. So the moment you find the reciprocal of 3 over 2, the power will become a positive like this. So from here... We can see this power is affecting both the numerator and the denominator. So this is the same as 2 raised to the power of 2 over 3 raised to the power of 2. So from here, 2 raised to the power of 2, it's 2 times 2, which will give us a 4. Then 3 raised uh, to the power of 2 is 3 times 3, which will give us a 9. So this is our answer. So the value is 4 over 9. We now come to question 2. Factorize completely 2ax plus 4ay minus 3bx minus 6by. So uh, first thing we are going to write uh, this expression. So we have 2ax plus 4ay minus 3b x minus 6 b y so first thing we are going to study our terms so here we have 2 ax plus 4 ay so you can see a and a they are common right here okay then e, minus 3 bx minus 6 b y so even you have b and b they are common so sometimes if they are not common you need to regroup your terms then you factorize now in this case our terms are common, so we are just going to separate them with the brackets like this. Okay, even here we separate like this. Now from here, we need to factorize in the first bracket. So we have 2ax plus 4ay. In terms of the numbers, we are going to find the highest common factor of 2 and 4. In this case, it's 2. Then we have a and a is common, so we also factor out a. Then here, we have x and the y. They are different. So, we just do that. Open bracket. So, 2 into 2, it's 1. A into A, it's 1. So, just remain with the x. Right here. So, you write x plus 2 into 4. It's a 2. A into A will cancel. You just remain with the y. Close. Minus. So, here we have x plus 2y. So, even this side when you factorize, should have the same x plus 2y. If it's different, it means that our factorization is wrong. Okay. So here we have 3bx minus 6by. In terms of the numbers, we have 3 and 6. We find the highest common factor of 3 and 6. It's a 3. Then we have b and b. These are the common letters. So we factor out b. Now here we have x. Then we have y. These are different. So we write open bracket. So 3 into 3 is 1, b into b is 1, you just remain with the x right here. 
Then this negative times this negative to give us a positive 3 into 6. It's 2. Okay? B and B, it's 1. So it just remain with a Y. Then we cross. So you can see that you've got um, the terms in brackets are the same. So what you do is just pick one term, which is X plus 2Y. You cross. Again, open bracket. So you can see we have 2A minus 3B. So we write 2A minus 3B. So this is our answer. Okay. We have now come to question 3 right here. So simplify. Uh, 3 in, uh, in brackets, we have 4X minus 5 plus 2. So uh, what we need to do is to write the question. So we have 3 open bracket, 4x minus 5, close bracket, plus 2. So first thing, we are going to open the brackets by expanding with the 3, which is outside. So 3 times 4x, this will give us what? 12x minus 3 times 5, this will give us a 15. So we have opened the brackets. Now there is plus 2 right here, so you write plus 2. So from here uh, we write 12x. This is the only term with a variable. Then here we have negative 15 plus 2. So negative 15 plus 2 this will give us negative what? 13. So this is our answer. We have 12x minus 13. We now come to question 4. Solve the equation. 4y squared minus 8y is equal to 0. So, uh, we are solving this equation. 4y squared minus 8y is equal to 0. So, this is a quadratic equation because y is raised to the power of 2. So, this means that the values of y, they are going to be 2. So, you can even check in our answer section right here, y is equal to dash or dash. So they expect us to find two values for y. So first thing, we are going to factorize this uh, left-hand side. So we have 4, 8. So in terms of the numbers, we factor out what? 4. So 4 is the highest common factor of 4 and 8. Then we also have y squared and y. So even the variable y will be, fact, uh, will be written outside the bracket because it's common. So the moment you do this, you write open bracket. So here... We have 4 into 4 is 1. Y into Y squared will remain with a single Y. Minus 4 into 8. It's a 2. So Y into Y, it's 1. So it just remain with a, a 2 right here. So that when you expand, you get the same thing which is on top. It's equal to what? 0. So this 4Y is going to be equated to 0. Again, this Y minus 2 in brackets will also be equated to 0. So you are going to... To write like this, you say 4y is equal to 0, okay, or, or y minus 2 is also equal to what? To 0. So y minus 2 is also equal to what? To 0. Now from here we can solve this one. So for this one, we are going to divide by 4 because we want to find the value of y. So, this 4 and this 4 will cancel. Therefore, y is equal to, so 4 into 0, it's a 0. So, here, y is equal to 0. Now, we are remaining with this other one where we have y minus 2 is equal to 0. So, this negative 2 will go to the right-hand side. We are going to have y is equal to 0 plus 2. So, y is equal to 0 plus 2. We are going to have a 2. So here y, uh, y is equal to what? To 2. Right here. Y is equal to 2. So we so, come to question 5. Shade in brackets we have A union B complement intersection C on the diagram in the answer space below. So this is the answer space you need to shade. So uh, if you are familiar with how you can shade this, you can just shade direct. Okay, now if you are not familiar, what you can do is you can introduce numbers or letters in all 
in a circle. So I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So the reason why I've introduced these numbers is just to help me to be able to identify the region that I'm going to shade nicely without making a mistake. Okay, so I'll identify, let me say my set A is equal to, so this is your set A, you have 1, 2, 4, 5. So in set A, I've got 1, 2, 4, 5. Okay, now set B, let me write my set B. So this is my set B where I've got 2, 3, 5, 6. So I've got 2, 3, 5, 6. This is set B. Now from here, uh, let us find B complement because here I've got B complement. So B complement, uh, we should exclude the elements that are in set B. So the remaining elements, that is B complement. So the elements that are in set B, we have 2, 3, 5, 6. So we exclude 2, 3, 5, 6. The remaining elements, we have 1, 4, 7, 8. This is our B complement. 1, 4, 7, 8. So from here, let us now find A union B complement. Okay, so union means we combine the elements that are in set A with the elements that are in B complement. So set A is 1, 2, 3, 4. So I write 1, 2, 4, 5. Not 1, 2, 3, 4, sorry. So 1, 2, 4, 5. So in set B complement, we have 1, 4, 7, 8. Now you can see 1 in B complement is also in A. So I'm not going to write it twice. we we'll just write it once the way I've written. 4 is also here we have written. Uh, 7 is not here. So we can write 7. Then 8. We also write 8. Okay. This is uh, the union set of A, union B, complement. You have combined. Okay. So from here, let us also find now A union B, complement, intersection C. Because this is what the question is asking you right here. Okay? So, what you do is, your C, your C is the elements that are in C, we have 4, 5, 6, 7. We have 4, 5, 6, 7. This is our set C. So intersection means we combine the elements that are in A union B complement with the, the elements that are in C. So let us see if we've got common elements. In A union B complement, we've got one. In C, there's no one. Right here in C, there's no one. We have two. In C, right here, there's no two. We have a four. Okay? In C, in set C, we also have a four right here. And there is a four. So four is intersecting. We write four, comma. We have 5. Do you have 5 in C? Yes, it's there. So even 5 is intersecting. We have 7. Do you have 7 in C? Yes, it's there. So you also write 7. We have um, 8. Do you have 8 in C? No. Okay? So we are not going to put it there. We have 6 in C. Do you have 6 in A union B complement? It's not there. So this is A union B uh, Complement in brackets intersection C. So let us identify. Let us identify the regions where we have four, five, seven. So we have four, five, seven. So we need to shade this part where we have these numbers. Okay, like this. So this is our answer. So by putting the the numbers or the letters in these circles, they will just help you to identify the specific region that you are going to shade. But if you are familiar with how you can shade it first, you can do so. Okay, so that you have not wasted too much time in an exam. So we now move on to the next question. Come to question six. 
a company declared a dividend of 2.75 kwacha per share so 2 kwacha 75 ingwe per share a businessman invested 560 shares in the company how much dividend did he get so here uh, we are going to find the dividend amount for this person so we say dividend amount dividend amount is equal to so here we are going to get the dividend per share the dividend per share times number of shares so dividend per share times number of shares so this is our formula so from here uh, the dividend per share in the question they have told us that each share was costing 2 kwacha 75 ingwe so you write 2 kwacha 75 ingwe times the number of shares that this person bought in the company was 560 shares so we just need to to multiply okay so i'm going to say 275 okay times 560 so from here we say 0 0 0 because 0 times 5 0 0 times 7 0 0 times 2 is 0 so i'll put a 0 here 6 times 5 it's 30 i'll write 0 i'll carry a 3 6 times 7 is 42 42 plus 3 uh 45 so you write 5 we carry a 4 uh 6 times 2 it's uh 12 12 plus 4, we are going to have uh, a 16. So to come to this other 5, I will write two zeros here. 5 times 5 is 25. I will write 5. I will carry a 2. 5 times 7 is 35 plus 2, 37. So I will write 7. I will carry a 3. 5 times 2, it's 10. 10 plus 3, we are going to get a what? A 13. Then we can cross like this. Then we add so we can put the zeros here so that we just maintain the, the place values. So what you are going to get 0 plus 0 plus 0, it's 0. 0 plus 0 plus 0, 0. 0 plus 5 plus 5 is 10. So I write 0, I'll carry 1. 0 plus 6 plus 7, you are going to have 13. Plus that one you are carrying, you have 14. 0 plus 1 plus 3, you are going to have a 4 plus that one. We are going to have what? A 5. 0 plus 0 plus 1. It's a 1. So uh, this is what you are going to have. We are going to have uh, 1, 5, 4, 0, 0, 0. Now our final answer. Remember this. Well, these are the decimal point. So even on this one should put a decimal point. So it's having 1, 2 serving two decimal places even here we'll move one two so this is where the decimal point is going to be so we have one five four zero point zero zero so this is our answer uh the dividend amount that this person is going to get will be uh, one thousand five hundred and forty kwacha okay this is the dividend amount that this person is going to get so we are done answering uh, this question so you must make sure that you are able to multiply in an exam because this is paper one no calculator is going to be allowed so you must know how to multiply okay we move on We've now come to question seven the question reads given that two comma negative one comma negative four are consecutive terms of an arithmetic progression Find the A, the common difference represented by letter D, B, formula for the nth term. So I'm going to start with question A, where we, we should find the common difference. So first thing, let us write our sequence, 2, comma negative 1, comma negative 4. So this is our sequence. So we should rename this sequence. We have term 1. This is term 2. Again, this is our term 3. So to find the common difference in an arithmetic progression, 
is found by common difference is equal to you are going to subtract term 1 from term 2 okay so this will be term 2 minus term 1 okay so the common difference is equal to our term 2 is a negative 1 then our term 1 is a 2 so the common difference is equal to negative 1 minus 2 this will give us a negative what 3 so here the common difference will be equal to negative 3. Now, let us find our formula for any term. That is question B. So, to find the formula for any term, we are going to come up with this formula. Any term is equal to A plus open bracket N minus 1 close bracket D. So, from here, we need to come up with a, a sequence. Sorry data so a is the first term which is a 2 right here the first term then d is the common difference that you have found which is a negative 3 so you have to be careful there if your common difference is wrong you even get this question wrong n is a uh, is the any uh, should should not be replaced because standing in for the position of the term so you should just come up with it the formula for the any term that will be used to find the terms in a sequence, okay? So, where there is n, we are not going to put anything. So, from here, we can proceed. Any term is equal to where there is a, we are going to put a 2 plus open bracket n minus 1 cross times. Uh, the common difference is a negative what? 3. So, from here, we are going to have any term is equal to 2 plus. So this negative 3 has to multiply all the terms inside the bracket. So negative 3 times n, this is going to be negative 3n. Negative 3 times negative 1, this is going to be positive what? 3. Now from here, we are going to have any term is equal to, we say 2, we open the brackets by multiplying with a positive outside positive times negative 3n this will be negative 3n positive times positive 3 this will be positive what 3 so from here uh we can correct the like terms so i'm going to have any term is equal to we have a 2 the right term is a positive 3 so plus 3 then minus 3n so uh from here we are going to say our any term uh, 2 plus 3, this is a 5, minus 3n. So our final answer, our final answer that we have, so our final answer formula for the any term is 5 minus 3n. So we have answered this question. Now we move on to the next one. Okay, so we've come to question 8. Under question 8, we have two questions, A and B. So we are going to start with the question A. The probability that a boy will be late for school on any particular day is X. Find in terms of X the probability that he will not be late for school. So they want you to find in terms of X the probability that he will not be late for school. So we have to make this uh, probability that he will not be late to school as in the subject or the formula should be the first one starting okay so uh, we are going to have uh, the equation which is going to contain x so what you need to know is where uh, the probability of an event happening plus the probability of an event not happening should always be equal to one the chances are, are one that's going to happen so here we are going to say the probability of the boy being late for school I'll just write late for a bit of the boy being late uh, for school on any particular day then plus the probability okay then plus the probability of the boy not being late so here i'll write not late should be equal to what one so from here the probability of the boy that will be late for school on any particular day is x so here where we've got the probability of the boy being late 
is going to be presented by what? By x plus the probability of the boy not being late. Okay, it's the one that they want us to express in terms of x. So plus the probability of the boy not late is equal to one. So from here we take this x where we have a one. Okay, so we have probability of the boy not being late. Uh, for school is equal to 1 minus x. So when x goes to the right hand side, it's going to be a negative. Here it's a positive. So this is our answer. Remember they just said find in terms of x the probability that he will not be late for school. So this is your probability that the boy will not be late for, for school in terms of what x. This is how we answer it. So we have answered our question A. Let us now move on to question e, B. We now come to question B right here. The vector RS is equal to this position vector negative 4 and 5. Given that the coordinates of the point S are 1, 2. So this is position vector. These are in coordinate form. The coordinates for the point S. Find the coordinates of point R. So they want us to find the coordinates of a point R. So our come up with a triangle, I'll write this triangle, so that this triangle will help us to identify. So we are going to have the origin here, then we are going to have uh, point R, and we are going to have point S. So from this origin, the direction will go to R, again from the origin, the direction will go to S. So what we have been given is that the vector RS, the position vector for RS is negative 4 and the 5 okay so we have been given point s point s so this point s we write it as uh, the position vector it will be 1 2 so os here we are going to have 1 2 okay now they want us to find the point for r so in order for us to find the coordinates for r we need first to find the position vector of all r Okay, here, or R. So what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to say, we are going to say, OR is equal to, so to find OR, we are going to say, OS plus SR. So we are going to say, OS plus S what? R. Now from here, we are going to write OR, is equal to OS is this one, 1, 2, okay, then we say plus, now, here, for RS, this was in line with the direction, okay, the vector was negative 4 and 5, but it's, it's the SR, so if it's SR, it means that the exchange in it, uh, it's against the direction, okay? So what you do is you are going to mo multiply this vector RS with a negative. So I'm going to have something like this. Okay. So negative times negative is a positive. So it's a 4. Negative times a positive. This is positive 5. So it will be a negative what? 5. So this will be the position vector of SR because it's against the direction. So here... We are going to write 4, then negative 5, like this. So from here, uh, what are we going to do? We are going to write OR is equal to 1 plus 4. This will be a 5. 2 plus negative 5. This will be a negative what? 3. So remember, they said find the coordinates of the point R. So this what that we have. This is uh, in this is the position vector of OR. So in in coordinate form, we say therefore in coordinate form for point R is going to be five comma negative three. So this is our answer. Okay, this is how we can find the, the coordinates for point R. So we are done answering this question. We now move on to the next part. Alright, so we have come to question 9. 
Now on question 9, we also have question A and B. The matrix M is equal to this matrix, and the matrix N is equal to this matrix. Find MT. So uh, we answer our first question, we find MT. So this MT, this is read as the transpose of matrix what? T. So T stands for transpose. Okay? T stands for transpose. So the transpose of the matrix, for example, if you have matrix A, it's equal to, so I'm just giving an example. You have matrix A, which is equal to maybe 0, uh, 4, 1, 8. This is the matrix for A. So if they ask you to find the, the transpose A to the power T, meaning the transpose of matrix what? A. What you are going to do is, A, uh, 0 and 4, these are, in, these are the rows. Okay, these are the rows. So what you do, you change these rows to become columns. So this 0, 4 will be written in this direction, okay? Again, this row 1 and 8 will also be written in this direction. So meaning that your answer is going to be here you write 0, 4, then here you write 1, 8. That is how they are going to check. To change now let us see with the with the, what you have been given okay let us check so we can check uh, we find the, the transpose of matrix C, M so first thing we we take note of matrix M which is 1 5 2 7 so this is matrix M so the transpose of this matrix M is going to be uh, remember I've said 1 and 5 these are the rows so these rows will be written in this direction okay so it will be 1 and a 5 again you've got these rows 2 and 7 they will also be written in this uh, direction so you're going to have 2 7 so this is the transpose of uh, matrix C, M okay so, the answer for, for A is 1, 2, 5, 7. So, this is how we find the transpose of a matrix. You just um, interchange the rows to become columns. Okay, just like that, as simple as that. Now, we move on to question what? B. So, for question B, uh, this is question B right here. Find NM. So, uh, we are answering question B. So, NM means N times M. So, the matrix for N times the matrix for M. So, uh, we are going to write matrix N, which is 0, 1, 2, 0, times the matrix for M, it's 1, 5, 2, 7. Okay? So, after writing like this, I will continue this side. So, this is a 2 by 2 matrix. You are multiplying a 2 by 2 matrix with another 2 by 2 matrix. So, your answer should also be a 2 by 2 matrix. Okay? Which is going to just have 4 entries like this. You have one, one entry there, another one here, and here. This is how your answer should do, look like. So, the way we multiply a matrix with another matrix we we'll just say this row times uh, times this column. Okay? So, 0 times 1. 0 times 1, the answer is what? 0. So, to come to this other entry, you are going to say plus 1 times 2. The answer is what? A 2. Then, I'll leave space because this is a 2 by 2 matrix, so here there should be space here. So, again, row by this column. 0 times 5, it's 0. Plus 1 times 7, you get 7. Okay? So, the moment I'm done, I can close. Then, I'll say, again, this row down here times column. So, 2 times 1, I'll get a 2. Plus 0 times 2, it's 0. 
again rho by quorum, 2 times this 5, I'll get 10, plus 0 times 7, I'll get 0. So now we can have our final answer right there, and this final answer, we just add 0 plus 2, we get a 2, 0 plus 7, we get 7. So we can close. 2 plus 0, we get a 2. 10 plus 0, we get 10. So this is our matrix NM. We have multiplied the matrix for N with the matrix for what? For M. This is our answer. We are done. We move on to another part. We've come to question 10. So question 10, we have A and B. We are going to start with question A. Okay. So question A reads, given that the inverse set is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So uh, we take note of our inverse set. So a inverse set is a set that contains all the possible given elements that are found in the given sets. Okay. That is the inverse set. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. This is our inverse set. So what will be our set X? Set X is equal to 1, 5, 9. So set X is equal to 1, 5, 9. Okay. And then we also have set Y. So what will be our set Y? Our set Y is 3, 9, 3, 9, 11. Okay. Now the question is, List x intersection y. There is a complement on y. List x intersection y complement. So the first thing that you are going to do is to find the y complement. So you write y complement is equal to. So y complement simply means that we remove the elements that are in set y from the universal set. So the, the elements that are going to remain in the inverse set after you remove these elements from y, that is the y complement. So we have 3, 9, 11. So we can remove 3. Again, we remove 3 from the inverse set. 9, we also remove 9. 11, we also remove 11. So the elements that are remaining in the inverse set, we have what? 1, we have 1, 5, and 7. These are the elements. So this is y complement. Now, sir, we say therefore x intersection y complement is equal to okay, x intersection y complement is equal to. So intersection means we find the common elements that are in set x and set y complement. So our set x is right here. We have 1 in set X. Do you have a 1 in set Y complement? Yes, it is. So this is intersecting. We write a 1, comma. We also have a 5 in set X. Do you have a 5 in Y complement? Yes. So it's also intersecting. We write a 5. Then we have 9 in X. Do you have a 9 in Y complement? No. We have a 7 in Y complement. Do you have a 7 in set X? No. So, the only intersecting elements is 1 and 5. So, therefore, x intersect, x intersect y complement is equal to 1 and 5. So, we have answered our question uh, A there. Let us now move on to question B. We've now come to question B. The diagram shows two triangles A and B. So, we have triangle A. So we have triangle A. Now, in case our triangle A is right here, so this triangle A is uh, looking like this. This is triangle A right here. Okay, I don't know if you are able to see it. Then we also have triangle B. So our triangle B is it's looking like this. Okay, this is our triangle B right here. So the question is, describe fully the single transformation which maps triangle A and to triangle B. 
So we have triangle A and triangle B. They want us to describe fully the single matrix which maps triangle A and to triangle B. So first thing, you have to take note of something, okay? So uh, what you are going to take note of is you find that uh, triangle A and triangle B, they are sharing the same distance. What does it mean? So the distance from here, from here, one, two, you have seen, huh? the distance coming from this point, okay, one. Again, the distance from this point for triangle A, one. Have you seen? Again, the distance from here to here, one. Again, the distance from here, where we have A, one. So, they are sharing the same distance. Again, if you measure in terms of here, one, two. Even this B, one, two. So, they have got same distance, okay? So, here, since they have got the same distance, there is need for us to identify the mirror line. So, the mirror line is going to be where we have Y is equal to 2. Y is equal to 2. That is where the mirror line is going to be drawn. So, the mirror line is here. Okay? So, this is Y is equal to 2. So, to, to describe this transformation, you can see that actually we have a reflection. Okay? Of one transformation to the other. So, this is a reflection with a mirror line y t, y is equal to 2. So I'm going to say, uh, this is a reflection, transformation. This is the reflection with, this is reflection with mirror, with mirror line, with mirror line, y is equal to what? 2. So, uh, this is your answer. You have described fully this transformation. We come to question 11. So, under question 11, we have two questions. We have question A and question B. So, question A, in the following diagram, points A and B lie on latitude 30 degrees south. So, point A. A and B, they are lying on this latitude, 30 degrees south, while point C is on latitude D, 30 degrees north. So this point C is on this latitude, 30 degrees north. Question A, the local time at A, okay? So the local time at point A is, uh, is 10 hours, while when it is 13 hours at point B. So at point B, the local time is 13 hours. Okay. Find the difference in longitudes between point A and B. Find the difference in longitudes between point A and B. So here uh, we are going to say a difference. A difference in longitudes. This is what they want us to find. They want us to find the difference in longitudes. So what you are going to do is, um, we are going to come up with a formula. First we find, we say, time difference. Okay? First we find time difference, we say. Time difference is equal to theta over 15 degrees. Okay? So this theta is representing the the difference in longitude okay difference in longitude now time difference we don't know what our time difference is but the time at a is 10 hours while the time at b is 13 hours so we have to find the time difference between point a and point b so point a is lying on the west side so point a is lying on this longitude right here Okay, which is on what? West. While point B is lying on this longitude, which is on what? East. Okay, so the time which is at B, uh, it's, uh, it has increased, while the time at A, it has decreased. So how do we find the time difference? We are going to subtract. We are going to say 13, 13 hours minus 
10 hours. So this will give us 3 hours. So the time difference will be 3 hours. So here, where I've got time difference, we're going to put 3. So I'll proceed from here. I'll say 3 is equal to theta over 15 degrees. So remember, I said this theta is representing uh, the difference in what? In longitudes. So this is a fraction. This is not a fraction. We divide by 1. And then we cross multiply. So 1 times theta, we're going to have theta is equal to, then we say, 3 times uh, 15. 3 times uh, 5, it's 15. We write 5. 3 times 1. Sorry, 3 times 5 is 15, we write 5, we carry 1. 3 times 1, it's 3, plus that 1, it's a 4, 45 degrees. So, the time difference, uh, the time difference, the, the, the difference in longitudes between point A and B is 45 degrees. So, let us now answer question B. Alright, so I've now come to question B. A plane flew from B to C at a speed of 600 knots how long did the plane take so if they ask how long simply means that they want you to find what time okay so time it's how long now if they ask how far they want you to find distance so how long it's time how far uh, i'd say distance so this plane was flying from point b right here to point what c so what are we going to do? We need to find time. So how can we find time? We are going to use this formula for, for speed where we say speed is equal to distance over time. This is the formula. Now from this formula that we have, if we, go, we, we organize our data, we are going to find that speed is equal to, so the speed we have been given, it's 600 knots. Okay? Now, what about distance? So, the distance we don't have. The distance between point B and C we don't know. So, let us find the distance between point B and C. So, point B and C, they are lying on uh, this longitude. Okay? They are lying on this longitude. And the latitude for point C is 30 degrees north. The latitude for point B is 30 degrees south. So to find the distance along the line of longitude, we are going just going to say distance is equal to theta times uh, skist. Okay? Theta times skist. So this theta is the difference in what? Latitudes. So the latitude for point C is uh, 30 degrees north. While the latitude for point B is 60 degrees south. So if uh, the latitudes, if the latitudes are lying on different hemispheres, we are supposed to add this one is on north, this one is on north, south. So we are going to say 30 plus 60. This will give us 90. Okay. So if it were, if these latitudes were lying on same uh, hemisphere like north north, should have subtracted or south south. Okay, now they are lying on different hemispheres. We are supposed to add. So where there is theta, we are going to put skisti. So you say uh, skisti, sorry for that, it's 90. That is um, the difference in latitude. So I are going to say 90. Okay, so 90 times skisti. So when we multiply 90 times skisti, we are going to have 5,000, 5,400, okay? We are going to have 5,400 as our distance. So upon having this, now we can continue to answer our question. Because we have the value for distance, we also have the value for speed, but we need to find it time which is right here so what are we going to do all right so this is our formula speed is equal to distance over 
right so uh, where the speed you are going to put 600 is equal to where there is distance we have found our distance to be 5400 over time it's the one that we want so here we divide by one then we cross what multiply so 600 uh, times t we are going to have 600 t okay so 600 times t we are going to have 600 t equal to 1 times 5,400, you are going to have 5,400. So since we are interested in finding the value of t, we are going to divide both sides of the equation by 600, so that this side will only remain with what t? Uh, a t. So uh, what we are going to do is, we are going to cancel uh, 000066. Then here we say 0, 0, uh, 0, 0. So we are remaining with the time this side equal to. So here we have um, 54 divided by what? By 6. So 54 divided by 6, this will give us what? Uh, 6 here, it's 1. 6 into 54. This will give us 9. So since this is time, nine uh, time is equal to 9 hours. So this was our time. So this is how we can answer this simple question as simple as that. So we are done answering this question. We now move on to the next one. All right, so we've come to question 12. So we start with A. Find the gradient of the line passing through the points A, 4, comma, negative 6, B, 2, comma, negative, uh, sorry, 2, comma, 4. So uh, we are answering for question A. So we have these coordinates. A is having the coordinates 4, comma, negative 6. Then B is having these coordinates 2, comma, 4. So they want us to find the, the gradient, okay? So first thing, we are going to come up with the formula for finding the gradient uh, between point A and B. So this formula is M. M stands for gradient is equal to change in Y, which is Y2 minus Y1 over change in X, which is X2 minus X1. So from these coordinates that we have, we need to identify X1, X2, Y1, and Y2. So this this would be our this would be our X1 right here then this will be our y1 and this will be our x2 this will be our y2 so we just have to substitute we say m equal to where there is y2 we are going to put a 4 4 minus where there is y1 we are going to put a negative 6 so because it's carrying a negative i'll put it in bracket so that the negative uh Will be affected by this negative outside x2 it's a 2 right there minus x1 it's a 4 so from here uh, we are going to proceed from here where we say m is equal to so we write our 4 we need to open the brackets for uh, negative times negative this will be a positive 6 okay over then 2 minus 4 this will give us a negative what? 2. So therefore, m is equal to 4 plus 6. This will give us a 10 over negative 2. So what will be the final value for the gradient? m is equal to, so 2 a 1, 2 into 10, it's a 5. So since it's a positive and a negative, definitely our answer is going to have a negative. So negative what? 5. This is the value of the gradient. Okay? So here, gradient was equal to negative what? 5. Now let us answer question B. Okay, so we now come to question B. Question B reads, solve the equation 2x cubed is equal to 16. So uh, we write our question 2x cubed is equal to 16. So they want us to find the value of x. 
So we have 2x cubed is equal to 16. So here we can divide by the coefficient of x, which is a 2, right here. Even here, we divide by 2. So uh, what you are going to do is you can cancel this 2 and this 2. We are going to remain with x to the power 3 is equal to. So 2 here, it's a 1. 2 into 16, because they are many times 8. So uh, here we have x cubed is equal to what? To 8. So what we need to do right here is to find the cube root of what? Uh, x. Or we introduce a cube root so that this is a cube root. So that, excuse me, this 3 and the cube root to cancel. Even to the right hand side to introduce a cube root. So this 3 and the cube root to cancel. We're going to have x is equal to. What is the cube root of 8? The number that we can multiply by itself 3 times to get 8. It's a 2 times 2 times 2. This will give us 8. 2 times 2 is a uh, 4. 4 times 2 8. So the cube root of um, 8 is what? 2. So this is the answer. So here we have x is equal to what? 2. You have gotten your 2 marks there. We now move on to question 13. Come to question 13. In the following diagram, AB and AC are tangents to the circle center O. AC and BE produced meet at D and angle BAC is equal to 54. Calculate A, A, C, B. So A, C, B. They want you to find the angle which would be right here. Okay? On e, C. So how can we find the A, C, B? So first thing we have been told that A, B and A, C. These are tangents. Okay? So A, B, C forms an isosceles what, triangle because A, B and A, C they are tangents. So here we are going to have an isosceles triangle meaning that the angle which is here and the angle which is here they are going to be equal. So we are going to label this as the angle Y even here angle Y. So we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle, they add up to 108. So we are going to add y plus y plus 54 and equate to 180. Okay? So we are going to say y plus y plus 54 is equal to 180 degrees. So y plus y you are going to have 2y plus 54 is equal to 180 degrees. So we want to find the value of y. So we are going to correct the right terms. So this 54 will go to where 180 is. So we are going to remain with 2y is equal to 180 minus a 54. So... Uh, this 54 degrees, it was a positive right here. When it goes this side, becomes a negative. So we are going to have 2y is equal to 180 minus 54. We are going to have 126 degrees. So I want to find the value of y. So we are going to divide both sides by the coefficient of y, which is a 2. So this 2 and this 2 cancel. So we are going to have y is equal to so even here I'll say 2 here it's a 1 2 into 12 it's a 6 then 2 into 6 it's a 3 so y is equal to 63 degrees right here okay so here we know we now know that we are going to have a 63 right here we are going to have a 63 even here we are going to have a 63 so angle ACB this will be equal to 3 degrees. So let us now find the angle CBD. Okay, so how can we find CBD? So CBD. So they want us to find the, an angle which is going to be right here at B. Okay, CBD. So first thing, we have to take note of this line. Okay, this line bd so this line bd it is a diameter okay 
So if line BD is a diameter, it means line BO is going to be a radius from B to O. It's going to be what? A radius. Hence, if we get this radius plus this tangent that we have right here, this is going to form a 90 degrees. Okay? It will form a 90 degrees right here. Okay? So if it forms a 90 degrees, and here we have an angle which is a 63. So means that here we are going to have a 90. Where we we'll say 63 plus the angle which will be a is the one that will give us 90. So to find an angle which will be at B, uh, we are just going to say, we we'll say 90 minus 63. So 90 degrees minus 63. Okay. So this 90 degrees minus 63. It's going to give us what? 27 degrees. So I hope you have gotten what I've said here. We consider the BD to be a diameter and then BO is the radius. So BO radius and this uh, tangent, it will give us a 90 degrees of which we are saying OBA. OBA to be uh, a 90 degrees. Not so. So I've said here we have a 3. When we add the angle which is at B, should have a 90. So, we we'll say 90 minus the 3, we will get the angle at B. So, CBD, this we have said, this will be equal to 27 degrees, right there. So, we are just remaining with the CDB, the CDB. So, in order for us to find the CBD, uh, I'll do this, let me... C, B, D. So let me uh, redraw this triangle. It's like this. So C, B, D. They want an angle which is going to be. So at B, we said we have 27 degrees. So we don't have an angle here. Now, we are going to consider this line A, C, D. So this line A, C, D is a straight line, okay? So meaning that here we have an angle of what? 180. So I need to find an angle which will be. So if you have a 63 here, we just say 180 minus 63, you get an angle which will be right here. I hope uh, this is clear. So say 180 minus 63, we are going to get 117. So meaning that here we have 117. So, right here, you are going to have an angle 117, uh, okay? Here, 117 degrees. So, to find the, the angle which is at D right here, we are going to find the sum total of the angles in a triangle which is 180. So, we just say angle D is equal to the sum total is 180 minus, then we find the sum of 117 plus C. 27, so 117 plus 27 degrees. So this is what you are going to do. Therefore, angle D is equal to 180 degrees minus. So 117 plus 27, this will give us 144. So from here you say angle D is equal to 180 minus 44 we are going to get 36 degrees. So, right here at D, an angle which was there was 36. Right here, we are D, 36. So, CDB is equal to 36 degrees. So, we are done answering this question. Now, we can move on to the other question. Alright, guys. So, we have now come to question 14. Question 14 reads, the mass of a loaf of bread is 702.1 grams. Correct one decimal place. Find the A lower limit. So we're going to start with question A, where they have asked us to find the lower limit. So how do you find the lower limit? You find the lower limit by using a simple formula where you say a uh, true value. You can say true value or recorded value minus absolute error. So this is the formula that we are going to use. 
Now from here, what will be our true value, our lower limit? So we say lower limit. It's equal to true value is the value that you are given, which is this one, where we get 702 minus 2. Sorry, sorry, 702.1. Point, point 702.1 minus. Now, what will be your absolute error? So you say absolute error. Is equal to so uh, here the thing is this is a decimal number which is, which is having one decimal place so to pick your absolute error you are just going to consider 0 0.05 so 0 0.05 will be your absolute error so it gets 0 0.05 okay so from here we just need to, to subtract this so I'm going to rearrange you right 702.1 minus so uh, 0 0.05. So here we write 0, 0, 0. Okay, so point like this. So what are we going to do? We add the 0 here. We say 0 minus 5, it can't. So let's just say, okay, 0 minus 5, it can't. You borrow from here, we remain with a 0. 10 minus 5, it's a 5. So you borrow the one, you remain with a 0. 0 minus 0, 0. Uh, 2 minus 0, it's a 2. 0 minus 0, 0. 7 minus uh, 0, 7. So your lower limit, so this is your lower limit, which is 7. 702.05 so when you are finding the lower limit you are just supposed to get true value minus absolute error but if you are finding the upper limit you are supposed to add true value plus the absolute what error and this absolute error it will depend with the true value that you are given so if you are given a whole number your true va your absolute error will be just 0 0.5 okay so let us now look uh, for question b answer question b all right, so let us now answer relative what error. So we find the relative error. So relative error is found by this formula. Relative er error is equal to absolute error or absolute value. You say absolute error over true value or over recorded value so uh, our data right here the absolute value the absolute error is uh, this one 0 0.05 then your true value is 702.1 okay so you just have to Diffuse in right there. So I'm going to say absolute error is 0 0.05 over true value is 702.1. So it will be very difficult for you to divide like this. So I have to make sure that you reduce okay, the numerator and the denominator by not having these decimal numbers. So how can we reduce? This decimal uh, numerator has got two decimal places. So in order for it to become a whole number, I'm going to multiply by 100. So if it was having one decimal place, it have multiplied by 10. Now because it's having two, multiply by 100. So whatever you do on top, even at the bottom, you multiply by 100 like that. All right. So uh, what are we going to get? 0 0.05 divided by 100. You are going to get a 5 over 702.1 times 100. Sorry, I said divided here. It's times 100. Uh, times 100, you are going to get 70210. Okay. So from here, uh, let us uh, reduce now our answer. Okay. All right. So from here, we can divide where you say 5 here 
it's one okay so we are going to say our our relative error is equal to, so we are going to have one over so five into seven it's uh it's one one the remainder is uh, a two five into this two and a zero you have 25 into 20 it's uh, a four okay five into 20 it's a four so five into this two you get a zero so this two and the one becomes 21 five into 21 it's four it's four it's four remainder a one because it's 21 so this one and the zero becomes 10 five into this 10 it will be a two so this will be your answer that is our relative what error we have now come to question 15 two similar solids p q p and q are volumes 80 cubed centimeter and 270 cubed centimeter respectively the height of the smaller solid is 80 centimeter find the height of the larger solid so uh, they have given us the height of the smaller solid they want us to find the height of the larger solid so in order for us to to find the, the height of the larger solid we need first to to present the volumes that you have been given as we uh, ratio so first we consider the volumes okay so volumes we have um, the volume of the of the smaller solid okay then we present it in ratio form to the volume of the larger solid so they have told us that uh, the volume of the the volume of the smaller solid is 80 so it's 80 cubed okay the volume of the larger solid is 270 cubed centimeter so we need to find the the scale factor of the volumes that will be presented as the ratio so in order for for us to do that we've got similar units here because the ratios are, are should have the same point similar units so we need to to do this we can divide okay by 10 by 10 centimeter cubed even here we divide by 10 centimeter cubed so that we cancel these centimeters cancel them okay so uh zero zero again zero zero so what have we remained with we have remained with eight to twenty seven now since this is a uh, volume so there's need for us to find the cube root of these volumes so the cube root of 8 will be a 2 then the cube root of 27 will be a 3 so after doing this now we can now bring in the the height of the smaller volume sorry the height of the smaller uh solid and the height of the larger solid Okay, so we are going to, to write it this side. So now we compare we, in terms of height. So the height they have told us that for smaller to larger. The height of the smaller uh, solid is 8. And the height of the, the height of the bigger solid we don't know. So this will be just presented by what? by x so what you are going to do now is we are going to get their volumes which is 2 to 3 this that we answered right here 2 to 3 okay then we have this i hope uh, it's clear so we can do this meaning 2 times x we are going to have 2x so let me do this here so 2 times x we are going to have 2x so you write 2x equal to then 3 times 8. You can write 3 times 8 because this is the point. So I'm avoiding bigger values. So I'll divide by 2. I'll divide by 2. So this 2 and this 2 cancel. We say x is equal to 2a. Uh, 2 into itself. 2a is a 1. 
2 into 8 is a 4. So 3 times 4, you get what? 12. So this tells us that, uh, therefore, height, you can just make a statement, height of the larger, larger, height of the larger solid is, so you write the value that we found right here, which is 12 centimeters. So this is our answer. Okay, so we've now come to question B. In the diagram, FGH is a straight line. FG is equal to 8 centimeter. EG is equal to 10 centimeter. And the angle EFG is equal to 90 degrees. Find the value of sine. Okay, so they want us to find the value of sine EGH. Okay, this is what they want us to find. Now, the moment you see sine, remember this is a right angle triangle, so you have to remember the trigonometric what, ratio since we are talking about sine. So, what is the trigonometric ratio for, for sine? We normally say sine is equal to opposite, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse. So, we come to this uh, diagram that we have sine e e sine e g h the sine which sine e g h okay e g h the sine which is outside right here e g h so what you are going to do first is you are going to find the sine which is inside okay we are going to find the angle which will be inside right here okay that is the sign we are going to find so where this angle is po pointing, this will be our opposite. Okay. Then we know that this is the, the hypotenuse, this side. Then this is the adjacent. So I've said first thing, let us find sine EGF. So sine EGF equal to. So sine EGF is equal to opposite. I don't have a value there. So I'll just say on opposite I'll have X over then my hypotenuse is a 10 right here. So let us find the opposite first. So in order for us to find the opposite right here, we are going to use Pythagoras theorem. So this, this is the opposite. We have the hypotenuse. So to find the opposite this side, we are just going to find the, the squares of the, the adjacent sides, then we subtract from where? From the hypotenuse. Okay, so I'm going to say EF, I'm going to say EF, EF squared is equal to, this is my opposite, so my hypotenuse is EG, EG squared minus FG, FG squared. So from here, we are going to say EF squared is equal to EG, this is 10, so 10 squared minus 8 squared. So from here, we are going to say EF squared equal to 10 squared, this is 100, minus uh, 64. Okay, so EF squared equal to 100 minus 64, we are going to get at six. So we introduce a square root even here so that these two and the square root will cancel. Our EF is going to be a six centimeter. So here, where we are at the opposite here, we are going to have what? Six centimeter. So upon identification of that, then we proceed, we say sine EGF equal to where there is X. It's 6 over 10. So you can try to reduce this. We find the number that can go into 6 and 10, which is a 2. 2 here, 3. 2 here, it's 5. So I have 5 over, sorry, we have 3 over 5. Okay, so we have uh, 
3 over 5. Now, upon um, finding EGF, EGF, remember the question is, you are supposed to find this sine EGH, which is outside, okay? So, we just say, therefore, okay, therefore, <coughs> therefore, sine EGH is equal to, so this one is going to be, it's going to have a negative, just a negative, 3 over 5. This will be our answer because this angle right here is outside. You just see, you have found the one which is inside. So this is how we can answer this question. We now move on to another question. Come to question 16. Y varies directly as the square of X and inversely as Z. And Y is equal to 2 when X is equal to 4 and Z is equal to 24. So first thing, come up with the, the, the variation. So they have said Y varies directly. So I will write Y varies directly. So we need to put a constant here first. Y varies directly as the square of X. So X squared like this. And inversely. So and inversely we put over and inversely as Z. So this is our variation to look like this. Okay. So uh, we write it now nicely. We remove this variation symbol. We say Y is equal to KX squared over z so this is what you'll be using okay you'll be using this equation to answer all these question questions all these questions so the moment you come up with the wrong equation you then you get even your question z wrong so i come to question a they are saying find the value of k the constant of variation so to find the value of k we use the same equation which we have which is y is equal to uh kx squared over z so here let us find the values that will be presented so the first value they have given you y is equal to this which is a 2 then x is equal to what 4 you use these values x is equal to 4 then z is equal to 24 right here so z is equal to 24 now we can substitute where we say where there is y we put a 2 so 2 equal to we want to find the value of uh, k so it's k uh, in brackets the value of x is a 4 so this will be a 4 in brackets squared over z is a 24 so from here we can say uh, 2 is equal to where we say k times 4 times 4 over 24 because 4 squared means 4 times 4 so i'll cancel this 4 right here is a 1 uh, 4 here uh, we'll get what 4 into 24 we'll get a 6 okay so here 4 into 24 we'll get a 6 so we have something like this we have 2 is equal to uh, k times 4 we have k times 4 over 6 so this is what we have okay let us now see how best we can find the value of k all right so we just this is a fraction this is not a fraction we divide by 1 cross multiply so we are going to have k times 4 is equal to 2 times 6 so I'll divide by this 4 I also divide by this 4. So I'll cancel this 4 and this 4. So let me just proceed from here. So uh, here, 2, 1, uh, 2 into 4, it's a 2 right here. So 2 here again, 1, 2 into 6, it's a 3. So you have 1 times 3 divided by 1, okay? So k is equal to what? 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. 3 divided by this one, you get the same value 3. So I found the value of k, which is a what? A 3. Alright, so let us now answer question B. Find the value of y when x is equal to 9 and z is equal to 27. So we will use the same equation, okay? 
we were going to say uh, when y is find the value of y so we just write y equal to so we know the value of k which is a 3 so I say 3 times x squared so x squared will be uh, 9 times 9 okay over what is the value of z it's a 27 right here over 27 so from here we are going to say y is equal to so what we can do is we say 9 here 1 9 into 27 uh, it's a 3 okay so again 3 a 1 uh, 3 into 9 it's a 3 so we have 3 times 3 times 1 so we have 3 times 3 times 1 over 1 so this will give us y is equal to 3 times 3 times 1 this is a 9 9 into 1 into 9 it's 9 so the value of y y is equal to what 9 let us now find the, the last question we, we now come to question c right here so find the values of x when y is equal to 8 z is equal to 6 so we know the the variation that we are using is y is equal to k x squared over z so here where there is y you are going to put 8 because y is equal to 8 where there is z you are going to put a 6 so we are going to have two possible values of x because they have said find the values of x so we are going to say 8 is equal to k is a 3 that we answered the constant so it's 3x squared over z is a what a 6 so uh, what we can do is i will divide by 1 then i'll cross multiply 1 times 3x uh, we are going to have uh, 3x squared equal to 8 times 6 so i'll divide by 3 i'll also divide by 3 so that uh, i cancel this 3 and this 3 then i'll remain with x squared is equal to 3 a 1 3 into 6 it's a 2 so 8 times 2 this will be a 16 okay so want to want to find the value of x so you have to get rid of this square okay so to get rid of the power 2 we're going to introduce a square root okay so even this side we introduce a square root so this two and the square root to cancel we are going to remain with x is equal to what is the square root of 16 square root of 16 you say plus or minus so therefore, remember they said find values. So we have two possible values of x. In this case, we are going to say x is equal to positive 4 or x is equal to negative what? 4. So these are the two possible values of what? Of x. On question 17, we have question A and B. We are going to start with question A. So the question reads, the diagram below shows a regular triangular prism. So this is a regular triangular what, prism. You can see the triangle here. Uh, even here I've got triangles. So these triangles, we are, these are equilateral triangles, meaning that they are, they are equal, the sides are equal. So because it's a, because it's a, it's a regular, so it simply means that it has got same size of an angle and same size of length. So describe the symmetry of the prism. So to describe the symmetry of this prism, uh, we are just going to say a, a triangular prism has an order of rotation of 3 and an angle of rotation of 120. So uh, we'll say a triangular prism A triangular prism as as an order an order of what an order of rot an order of rotation 
an order of rotation 3 and angle of 120 degrees this will be your description of this symmetry of the prism now in case you are you are wondering how come we have come up with these values so when you look at uh, this triangular prism when you rotate you keep on rotating this okay three times you find that it's going to rotate at an angle of what 120 so when you are stating the order you need the the order of rotation then you also find the angle of rotation okay so the order of rotation i've said it will be three times so you get that three okay then you you say 360 the angle of rotation when it's something's rotating like this it makes a complete evolution which is 300 and what 60 degrees so you get 360 degrees divided by the order of rotation which is the three that i've said okay so uh, 3 1 3 into 6 it's a 2 and this 0 this is where you are getting the 120 so this is how you can answer this question now let us look at question e, b so this is our question b in the answer space below is an incomplete program written in C code for calculating the curved surface area of a cone with base radius and slant height S complete the program so uh, here they have given us something we are looking at uh, the curved surface area of a cone okay of which uh, the the formula for this curved surface area of the cone we have been given which is the uh, area is equal to by R S this is the formula okay by R S now they want us to complete the program okay so let's say we can uh, complete the program so this is the pro uh, program that we have we have start enter area output then stop so they are talking about the area of the of the cone the curve surface area of the cone so uh, we said the, the formula we've been given which is area is equal to pi r s so from here we need to come up with the, the we need to come up with the, the input okay we need to come up with the, the input so uh, the input here we are going to say the input we are going to have what r and s not so so enter here we enter the input which is r and the s then area okay then area we are going to put area which you will say pi times pi times r then times s this is the area then the output is the area that you have and then stop so this is how you can complete this program okay now come to question 18 question 18 we have a and b so we're going to start with question a a b c is a straight line the coordinates of the points A and B are 2,1, 6,5 respectively. Given that B is the midpoint of AC, find the coordinates of C. So this is uh, this this will be like this. Let's say you have this uh, straight line where you have point A, then you also have point B, then you have point C. So they are telling you that this point B is the midpoint, is the one that is on the middle. Okay, then we, we do have the coordinates of point A. The coordinates of point A are 2,1 and the coordinates of B right here, which is the midpoint, are negative 6,5. Then we don't know the coordinates of C, so I'm going to say x, y. So here, how can you find the coordinates of C? So since B is the midpoint of AC, we're going to say... Uh, midpoint is equal to open bracket you say x1 plus x2 over 2 so this is the formula to must come up with then y1 plus y2 over 2 
the formula for midpoint. Now, they have told you that the midpoint between point A and C. So, you will assume that you are finding the midpoint of A and C. So, the midpoint of A and C right here. So, the midpoint of A and C is a B. So, where there is this midpoint, we are going to put negative 6. We are going to put negative 6 and 5. Like this. Equal to. Now, here, we, we will rename our coordinates. So, this is x1, y1. Okay. Then, this will be our x2, y2. So, we just say, where there is x1, we are going to put a 2. Plus, where there is x2, we put this x. So, it will just be x over 2, comma. Where there is y1, we put this one right here. Plus, where there is y2, we put this y. Okay. Over 2. So, from here, you can see this negative 6 will go with the first coordinate right here. So, I'm going to say 2 plus x over 2 is equal to negative 6. Okay? That is what I'll do. So, I'll say over 1, then cross multiply. So, 2 times the negative 6, we are going to get what? Okay, so we'll get a 12. So, you write 2 plus x is equal to negative what? 12. 2 times negative 6. So, this 2 will go here. We'll remain with x is equal to negative 12 minus 2. So, therefore, x is equal to negative 12 minus 2. We're going to get a negative what? 14. As in the x part coordinate. Now, remember, here, we just equated the negative 6 to the first coordinate. Now, we are remaining with it. this positive 5. We equate it to that. So, we are going to say 1 plus y over 2 is equal to 5. So, we divide by 1. Cross multiply. We say 1 plus y is equal to 2 times 5. It's a 10. So, we say y is equal to 10 minus 1. So, y is equal to 9. So, therefore, we say, therefore, the coordinates of C, remember we just said the x, y. So, the x coordinate is negative 14, comma, the y coordinate is a 9. So, these are the coordinates of what? Point C, negative 14, comma, 9. Okay, so let us now answer question B. To question B, in the diagram, AOB is a sector of a circle, center O, angle AOB is equal to 72 degrees, and the radius is 14 centimeter. Calculate the area of the sector, taking pi to be 22 over 7. So this is the sector that you are given right here. So first thing, come up with the formula for finding the area of a sector, which is area is equal to theta over 360 degrees times pi r squared. This is the formula. So I'm going to say area is equal to theta is this angle, which is uh, 72. So 72 degrees over 360 degrees times pi, they have said, take pi to be 22 over 7 times the radius is 14, now R squared, so it's 14 times 14. Now from here, this is where you have to be very careful because this is paper 1, so you need to eliminate something so that you get, your, you get values that are smaller and you'll be able to multiply. So this 72 can be obtained by multiplying 2 times 36, that is how you can have 72. Then 3 skis they can obtain by multiplying 10 times 36. Because 2 times 36 is 72. 10 times 36 is see, 3 skis. Times 22 over 7 times. We can also break this 14 where we say if we multiply 2 times 14. Sorry, 2 times 7. We say 2 times 7, then times 14. So, 
power where we say 2 times 7 then times 14 this one okay so what i've done is this 14 i've just said 2 times 14 sorry 2 times 7 is 14 then times this 14 now from here we can say area is equal to we cancel this and this that is the the the, the whole purpose okay we cancel that so that we reduce something then we are going to have 2 over 10 times so here we can cancel this 7 and this 7 okay so we are going to have 22 uh, times this 2 right here then times 14 so i do hope that you are following okay so from here uh we can cancel this 2 here 1 2 here it's a 5 so i'll say area is equal to 1 over 5 5 so 1 over 5 uh 1 over 5 times so 1 over 5 times what we multiply with the we have a 22 right here so 1 over 5 times 22 then times 2 times 14 this will give us a 28 like that okay so from here we can say area is equal to so what we are going to do is we can multiply 1 times 22 times 28 okay so we just use the basic multiplication where we say 28 times 22 so 2 times 8 this is a 16 we write a 6 we carry 1 2 times 2 4 plus 1 uh, 5 so we write a 0 2 times 8 is 16 we write 6 we carry 1 2 times 2 4 plus 1 a 5 and then we can add so here we are going to get 6 11 i'll write 1 i'll carry 1 0 plus 5 is 5 plus 1 6 so when we multiply when you multiply 22 times 28 you are going to get 616 over 5 something like this okay so uh, we can finish our question right here where we can say now here it's just a matter of uh, dividing so 5 here is a 1 5 into 6 so i say area equal to 1 5 into 6 is 1, remainder a 1. So, 1 and 1, 11, 5 into 11, it's uh, a 2. It's a 2, remainder a 1. Okay? So, 5 into 16, this 116, 5 into 16, it goes there many times, 3 times, remainder a 1. 5 into 1 is can't, then you put a point right here. So, to this one, add the 0 5 into 10 it's 2 so this is the answer we even say uh, since this is area so don't forget to put a 2 a power 2 on the units so area is equal to 123.2 square centimeter so we are done answering this question let us move on okay so we've come to question 19 given that function of x is equal to 3x plus 1 and g function of x is equal to 4x minus 1 find function inverse of x so uh, to find the function inverse to find the function inverse of x what you are going to do is uh, we take note of the function of x so the function of x is equal to 3x plus 1 so to find the function inverse of x we are going to come up with a constant variable where we say y is equal to this function of x which is a 3x plus 1 then from here, we make x the subject of the formula. So we are going to have y minus 1 is equal to 3x. So since we want to make x the subject of the formula, this one will go where y is. Then we remain with 3x. So from here, we are going to divide by 3, even here, 3. So this 3 and this 3 will cancel. And then you say x is equal to, we have y minus 1 over a 3. So, the question is, they want you to find the function inverse of x. So, you say, therefore, the function inverse of x is equal to, so, on this function that you have, where there is y, you are going to put x, because you are saying function inverse of x, minus 1 
over 3. So this is the answer for question A. Let us now answer question B, where we find function inverse of negative 5. So to function the function inverse of a negative 5, we already have the function inverse of x, which is this. So this means that where there is x, we are going to put a negative what? 5. So we are going to use this same function. So we will say uh, function inverse of 5 is equal to, we will get this, which is x minus 1 over a 3. So this will give us, where there is x, we will put a 5 minus 1 over a 3. So here we are going to have uh, the answer function inverse of 5 is equal to, so 5 minus 1, this will give us a 4 over a 3. So the final answer, we can leave our answer as a mixed fraction is 5. five uh, function inverse of 5 is equal to 3 into 4, it's 1, uh, remainder 1 over a 3. So this is the, the answer. Okay, this is our answer. Okay, so we now come to question C, where they want us to find f of g, x. So this is a composite function. Okay, so this composite function means that uh, this function of g will compose the function of what? f. So we have, uh, we have, we have the function of x, which is a, uh, which is a 3x plus 1. We also have the function of gx, which is a, uh, which is 4x minus 1. So what this means is that the function fg of x is equal to. So this function of g, this function of g, we will go, we will go and compose the function of f. So on the function of f, where we have this x, we are going to substitute with the 4x minus 1. So we write 3, open bracket. This is the function of fx. So where there is x, I will put this. We will write 4x minus 1. I close. Then plus 1. Okay. So from there, we can say 3x times 4x. This is a 12x minus 3 times 1. It's a 3, then plus 1. So from here, we can say 12x negative 3 plus 1. This will give us a negative 2. So this is the f of gx function. Okay, so this is our answer. All right, guys, so we've come to question 20. Question 20 reads, in the following diagram, angle BAC, angle BAC, is 46 degrees and AC, AC is equal to BC. B is due east of A. So B is due east of A, meaning that uh, these lines, these points or positions are perpendicular, okay? They are due, B is due east of A. So what it means is, I will, let me first extend this, uh, this north direction. Yeah, then here, I'll do this as well, because they have said B is due east of what? Of A, like this. Then, I'll draw my north here. Okay, so, uh, let us now continue. Calculate bearing of A from C. So, A from C. So, from C. So, I'll draw another north compass here at C. I'm going to have north. So they want us to find the bearing all the way from coming from C until we reach this line for for A. So this is the the bearing that they want us to find. Okay. So how can we find this bearing? How can we find this bearing? Now they have said uh, B is due east of A. Okay. Meaning that here we are having a a ninety degrees. Not so. We are having a 90 degrees. Now, right here, we've got this angle, which is a 46. So, to find the angle, which will be right here, we are just going to say, 
90 degrees minus 46 degrees and when we subtract we say 90 degrees minus 46 90 degrees minus 46 what is it giving us it will give us a uh, 44 so the angle here will be a 44 degrees now let us uh, use one property so if you have a 46 right here this angle and this angle right here they are alternating so alternate angles so 44 even here you are going to have a 44 degrees now to find the bearing from here up to this line on a this is a one 108 here it's a 108 so we are just going to add you say 180 plus this 44 this 44 degrees so 180 plus what 44 180 plus 44 was it what what is it giving us okay so we say 180 plus 44 here we have a 4 8 plus 4 is 12 we write 2 we carry 1 1 plus 0 is 1 plus that 1 2 so this will give us 224 degrees so the bearing of a from c was the 224 degrees let us now come to question b we find the bearing of c from b so to find the bearing of c from b uh, c from uh, c from b the bearing of c from b yeah this line c from b okay so we move from here and then we touch this point for for c okay so here uh, they said b is due east of what of a and uh, at first i did mention that if we if it's due east of A, here we are going to have a 90 degrees. Again, even here, we have a 90 degrees. We have a 90 degrees. So, again, this is uh, 100 and what? 80, not so. This is 180 that you have. Again, so here, 180 degrees. Then this, uh, let me just, let me just redraw this. This triangle that we have. We have something like this. There are these that we have put, okay? So if here is uh, a 46, even here it's a 46. So if you have a 46, even here it's a 46. Because this is now an isosceles uh, triangle. So to find this bearing, this angle all the way from here up to this line C, we are just going to add, okay? We are just going to say uh, 180 degrees plus... 90 degrees this 90 right here again plus this 46 this 46 degrees so 180 plus 90 plus 46 what are we going to get okay so when we add this we are going to get uh, 316 degrees okay so this simply means that the bearing of c from b was 16 degrees this is our bearing C from o, C from B. So this is how you can answer this question. We are done answering question 20. We now move on to question 21. I hope you are I hope you are enjoying. I hope you are moving together. If at all you have a question, you are free to leave a comment in the comment section. Then I'll be able to, to attend to you. Okay. Right. So we've now come to question 21. Write the four inequalities that define the unshaded region R in the diagram below so i want to write four inequalities that are going to define this unshaded region r in this diagram so we have these inequalities we have this line one line two line three and line four so the first thing you have to start with the simplest line okay so i'll i'll identify my lines i'll say this is line one okay then i'll say this one this one right here, this will be my line 2. So, I'm picking first the simplest one. Then, uh, this other one, this one, I can pick this as my line 3. Yeah, this one. Then, definitely, I'll pick 
this other one as well this one this is my line four so these lines represent the inequalities so i'll start with the line one so for line one uh this line it's a dotted line as you can see something like this for line one it's a dotted line huh? so this dotted line means that the symbol the inequality symbol is just going to be greater or less so it's going to be equal to but if you have a solid line like this it means the symbol that you are going to use will be greater less or equal to or greater or equal to because because the line is solid so bearing this in mind let us now take a look at line one it's a dotted line then where is it it's in the y-axis right here at the point y is equal to what two so this is the equation now they want us to write in equations excuse me so we are going to say why our little space here now to to identify or to know which inequality sign am i going to use so they want us to 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 describe the unshaded region so you can see this line y the shaded region is down okay down which is because we are looking at this point two so down you are saying these numbers they are less than two then above we are saying the numbers are greater than two so we are going to describe the unshaded region which is above so y is greater than what two this is our first inequality i hope we are we are moving together then we come to the second one so we come to line two which is this one right here this line here so line two so line two is in the y x-axis right here okay this is the x-axis where line two is right here at negative two so it's at the point x is equal to negative what two now the shaded part this shaded part right here here is showing that these numbers there are less than what negative two then the unshaded part is greater than negative two now what type of the line is it for this line two so for line two this is a solid watch a solid line so we are defining the unshaded region which is greater than two so it's going to be greater or equal so you say uh, x greater than or equal to negative what two so this is our second what inequality I hope you are you are following i hope you are following now we come to line three as well so line three so our line three is this line this line which is right here this is our line three it is in the x-axis at the point x is equal to four at this point okay so we are going to say x we leave space then we write here four now the shaded side this side where it is shaded these are numbers that are greater than four the unshaded side right here it is uh less than four numbers that are less than four now what type of a line is it so this is a solid what a solid line so remember what i've said if it's a solid line meaning that it's going to be uh less than or equal to or greater than or equal to so the unshaded part is less than or equal to four so x is less than or equal to what to four this is our uh, this is our third inequality now we need to find our fourth inequality which is uh, this one right here which is this one it's the only line that is remaining so how can we find this so we are just remaining with the line four right here so for to this line four you have to be careful okay it's not just passing exactly at maybe point two in y axis or in x axis but it's crossing two different axes it's crossing uh, y at the point uh, six it's also crossing the x axis at the point eight like this so what you need to do is you know that uh, this line uh, x this is the line y is equal to zero so you have to come up with a coordinate which will be eight comma zero okay then this line y we know that this is the line y x is equal to zero as well so you need to come up with the coordinates which will be uh, zero comma six so first thing you take note of the coordinates 
I hope uh, I hope you are together. We take note of the coordinates where we say uh, we have zero comma six, and then we also have eight comma zero. Now, step one: find the gradient of this line. Okay. So to find the gradient of this line, we need to identify our coordinates. This is x one, y one, x two, y two. So what formula do you use for gradient? You say gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So from here, let us just substitute. Here I'll say gradient is equal to my y2 is a 0 minus my y1 is a 6 over our x2 is 8 minus our x1 is a 0. So I hope that you are following. From here, gradient is equal to 0 minus 6 is a negative 6. Uh, 8 minus 0, it's 8. Okay? So from here, so from here, we can now say M equal to, we find the number that can go into 6 and 8, that is a 2. So 2 into 6, it's a 3. 2 into 8, it's a 4. So this is the value for gradient. Now let us come up with the, the, the equation of the straight line. We are going to use this formula. Y minus Y1 is equal to M, open bracket, X minus uh, X1. Okay, like this. So from the two coordinates that you had, we had 0, 0,6. And then we also had 8, 0. You can pick any of these coordinates, okay? So if I, if I choose this one, it means 0 will be my x1, y will be my y1. Or if I pick this one, I'll do the same, okay? So I've picked already, so I'll say y minus my y1 will be a 6, like this. Uh, okay, it's equal to m is the gradient which you have found, which is this one right here. So you say negative 3 over 4, open bracket, x minus, your x1 is a 0. Okay, so what you do is you just say y minus 6 is equal to, we open the brackets, negative 3 over 4 times x, we are going to have negative 3 over 4 x. Negative 3 over 4 times 0, it will be a 0, so don't write anything yet because you get a 0. A number multiplied by 0 get a 0. So, what we are going to do is this 6 will go that side, okay? So, uh, the 6 will go where negative 3 over 4x is. So, we are going to have y is equal to negative 3 over 4x plus 6. So, the 6 was a negative. Here, it's a positive. So, we are going to say y with this space. We write negative 3 over 4x plus 6. So the reason why I'm leaving space is because this is the, at this stage, we have the equation. Now I want the equation, okay, which is, this will be our equation 4. We want the equation. We need to come up with a specific what? We need to come up with a, a specific inequality that we are going to use, okay? So how can we know the inequality that we are going to use? We have to take look at we have to look at what we have. So this is our diagram, okay? So the line that we are talking about is this fourth line, okay? I don't know if you are able to see it. It's this fourth line right here, the one that is labeled here, shaded here, okay? This is the line that we are looking at. Now the shaded region uh, is the upper region. So this upper region is greater. Okay. While wow, the unshaded region is the lower region, which is less. So I want to describe the unshaded region, which is less. So what type of the line is it? It's a solid what? A solid line. So meaning it's going to be less or equal to. So here we are going just to fuse in on our, our equation. Okay. We are just going to fuse in on our equation right here. So we are going to say uh, y is 
less than or equal to negative 3 over 4x plus 6. So this is our fourth inequality uh, equation. Okay, equation. So we have answered this question. We now move on to the next one. Question 22a. Given that uh, y is equal to 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. Find dy dx. So dy dx simply means you differentiate this function with respect to x. Okay. So uh, we are going to say dy dx is equal to so the base principles of differentiation if you have a function like this y is equal to a ax to the power n and they ask you to differentiate you are going to say dy dx is equal to we are using a formula now so this power of n sorry this power of x which is n you multiply the coefficient of x which is a so it will be n times a then bracket then x n minus 1 so the power is going to be reduced by 1 so we are going to use this idea to be able to differentiate these functions so uh, this x the coefficient the power is a 2 so 2 times 2 2 times 2 cross x so 2 minus 1 then minus this 4x the coefficient is 4 so it's 4 times this x has a power of 1, okay? So it's 4 times 1, then uh, x, 1 minus 1. Now, sorry, 1 minus 1. Now, when you are differentiating, this is a constant. It doesn't have any variable. So to differentiate your constant, it will just give you a 0. So here I'll say plus C, 0, okay? Which is the same as not including the, that 0 is 5. All right. So from there, uh, we are going to say, dy dx is equal to 2 times 2 this is a 4x 2 minus 1 it's a 1 so even if i put a power 1 there uh it won't mean anything i will know that there is a power 1 there so if, if you want you can just get rid of it unless you have a power which is greater than 1 you, you, have, you can show it but if you have a power which is just 1 even if you have not shown it is 5 then minus 4 times 1, uh, it's a 4, okay, x. Now, 1 minus 1, it's a 0. So the power here was the 1, which was reduced by 1, which will be power 0. So uh, from here, uh, what are we going to do? So we are going to write dy dx is equal to, we say, 4x minus uh, 4 in bracket a number raised to the power of 0 it's 1 okay a number raised to the power of 0 it's 1 uh, it's only different if it's 0 raised to the power of 0 which is undefined so here our final answer now our final answer is going to be our final answer is going to be you write dy dx okay so I say dy dx is equal to 4x minus so 4 times 1 it's a 4 so this is our final answer that is how we differentiate functions if you need more on calculus you can just view my videos there are a lot of um, uh, lessons under calculus so that you get more insights now let us look at question b Come to question B right here. This is question B. The sketch shows the graph of y is equal to y squared minus 2x minus 8. So this is the graph. Find the coordinates of Roman numeral 1. Find the coordinates of A and B. So you can check. We have coordinate A. Then we have, we have point A and we have point B. So they want us to find the coordinates of these points. So first thing, we are going to consider... Uh, we have the x-intercept here, okay? So, we need to substitute into the y-intercept. Now, before we do that, the, this line, x, this line, this is the line y is equal to 0. So, the, the coordinates of A are going to be in this form. They are going to be in this form 
x comma y again for b it's also going to be x comma y now since we are saying point a and b they are lying on this line where y is equal to zero so we are going to have something like this x comma zero because we already know the y coordinate again x comma zero so we need to find the, the values of what x so what you are going to do is you are going to write this we have y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8 okay so we need to substitute into the we need to substitute the y intercept into the this equation so this is y is equal to 0 so we are going to have something like this x squared minus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0 so now what you have is a, it's a quadratic equation so you need to solve it quadratically by using different methods we have graphical we have factorization we also have a formula method completing the square so we can use just the factorization method so if we use factorization method you have to find the, the product and the, the sum so the product is found by multiplying the coefficient of x squared which is a 1 in this case here the coefficient is 1 so times the, the constant which is a negative 8 so 1 times negative 8 is to give us negative 8 then sum is found by getting the coefficient of x with the, the raised power so the coefficient of this x is a negative 2 right here so the sum is a negative 2 so after doing that we come up with two numbers such that when you multiply them we are going to get negative 8 when we add them we are going to get uh, negative 2 so these two numbers are going to be what uh, when you say negative 4 times 2 it will give us negative 8 the same numbers negative 4 plus 2 it will give us negative 2 so these are the numbers that we are going to use we are going to substitute them we are going to substitute these numbers right here okay so we will maintain we will maintain our x we will say x squared uh, plus 2x so we can give them variables this is negative 4x then this will be positive 2x so plus 2x and then minus 4x i've substituted right here then minus 8 is equal to what zero so i hope we have seen what i've done now from here uh, we just need to separate the terms this and this this and this so in the first term we need to fact out what is common here it's x open bracket x into x squared will remain with a single x plus x into this x will cancel remain with a 2 so whatever you have here even in this side when you uh sorry i put a i put a zero in brackets the zero is not supposed to be in bracket it's supposed to end right here yeah so even this side when you you factorize it should have x plus 2 in brackets so if it's different it means that your factorization is wrong somewhere okay so uh, we are going to do this now we have 4x minus 8 in brackets so what is common there in terms of the letters we only have x but in terms of the numbers we have 4 and uh, 8 so what we are going to do is we are going to write this negative which is right there on the middle minus highest common factor of 4 and 8 is a 4 open bracket 4 into 4 it's 1 so it will just remain with x this negative times negative positive 4 into 8 it's a 2 is equal to 0 so you can see that uh, you can see that what is in brackets are the same so what we do is we'll get just one you say x plus 2 again this x this x minus 4x so x minus 4 okay equal to what zero now from here uh, it becomes very easy okay so it becomes very easy you just say x plus 2 is equal to zero okay or this x minus 4 
is equal to zero. So x is equal to this is a positive two here, it will become a negative two. So x is equal to negative two, or x is equal to what? Four. So remember you have a which is x comma zero, then you also have b which is x comma zero. So looking at looking at what you have, you have x is equal to you have x is equal to to negative two. You also have x is equal to what to four. So looking at the graph now that you have, because you have to know which which point is going to have a negative value. So the point that is going to have a negative value, it's what it's a right here because it's in the x positive values in the x axis right here. So this a will be negative two comma zero then b will be four comma zero like this so these were the coordinates for point a and what b so let us now answer question e two all right so this is our question two right here find the minimum point on the graph so the mean by minimum point on the graph. Okay, so the mean by point we consider this uh, side down here. So how, how do you find the, the minimum point? So to find the minimum point, you are going to say there is a formula that you can use to say y is equal to okay, this is the formula to say four sc minus b squared over 4a so for you to know the values you get this general equation that you are given okay which is y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8 so a a is the coefficient of x squared b is the coefficient of x then c is the constant which is this so here this means that a is equal to 1 because the coefficient of x squared is 1. Then b is equal to the coefficient of this x is a negative 2. Then the constant value is a negative 8. So let us just substitute. You say y is equal to 4. I put in brackets. A, we have said it's a 1. Then c, it's a negative 8 like this. Minus b it's a negative 2 in brackets, so it b is squared on the formula there, over 4, open bracket, a is a 1. So from here, we are going to say uh, y equal to, so 4 times 1 times negative 8. 4 times 1 times negative 8, this will give us negative 32, minus negative 2 squared, this is a 4, over uh, 4 times 1, it's a 4. So from here, we can say we're going to have y equal to negative 32 minus 4. This will give us negative 36 over 4. So y is equal to 4 here, 1. 4 into 36 goes there 9 times. So 1 into 9 is 9, and then there's a negative here. So y is equal to negative what? Uh, 9. So this is the minimum point on the graph. Y is equal to negative 9. So this is how we can answer this question. We can now move on to the next question. Alright guys. So we've come to the end of our question. We are now on question 23 right here. Okay, this is question 23. The diagram below is the speed time graph of an object. The object starts from rest and accelerates uniformly for 2 seconds until it reaches a speed of 10 meters per second. It then travels at this speed for 8 seconds and finally decelerates to rest after 5 seconds. Find the question A, find the retardation of the object in the last 5 seconds. So in the last five seconds, they want you to find the retardation of the object. Sorry. 
So retardation will take place right here. This is where we're going to have retardation. So retardation is equal to uh, initial velocity minus final velocity over time. So from here, we should organize our information. We call it data. So initial, final, then time. So if it's uh, starting to decelerate from here, if it's starting to decrease from here, it means the initial is going to be right here, then the final velocity will be right here. Okay? So the initial velocity the, it will be a 10. So initial velocity is equal to 10. Then the final velocity will be equal to a 0 right here. So final velocity will be a 0. Okay? Then time, they have said in the last 5 seconds. So time is equal to 5. Okay, so uh, initial velocity, we have said this is a 10. Then final velocity, this is a, a 0. So let us just substitute. We we'll say retardation is equal to initial velocity is 10 minus 0. Final velocity over our time is a 5. So retardation is equal to 10 over uh, 5. So 5 is 1. 5 into 10 is 2. So retardation is equal to 2 meters per second square. So this is our retardation. Okay. Let us now find um, our question B right here. Alright, so we now come to question B. Find the distance traveled in the first 10 seconds. So the distance that is going to be traveled in the first 10 seconds, we are considering this distance. This is the distance that is going to be traveled in the first 10 seconds. So when you look at uh, this shape that you have, this is the shape that you have right here. Okay, so you have this shape. So this shape you have, uh, this is the shape that you have. Okay, so here, yeah, 0 to 10. So, uh, from this shape, we can see that uh, this is a trapezium, not so. So, I can say trapezium is, the distance is the same as the area under the shape when you are looking at the graph. So, what is the formula that you use to find the area of the trapezium? The formula is area is equal to 1 over 2 A plus B then H. So, A is E, there, B is here. Height will be here. So, if you are using this, you say height is here, A is here, B is there. So, you need to find the value of A, B, and D, H. So, height is the, the, from here to here, we are considering this speed right here. So, H is equal to 10. Then, B is from here up to here. So the difference in time, 10 minus 0, it's 10. So your B is going to be 10. Then A is the difference also in time from here up to here. So here you have a 10, here you have a 2. So you say 10 minus 2, it will give us 8. So A will be equal to what? 8. So let us now substitute. So I'm going to say distance equal to uh, half times A, it's 8, uh, plus B, we have said this is uh, 10, then times height is 10. Okay, so that is what we have. Okay, so now we can, uh, we can proceed to say distance is equal to, so uh, 2 a 1, 2 into 10, it's 5. So I'm going to have 8 plus 10. It's uh, 18 times 5. Okay. So distance is equal to, so I'll just multiply. 18 times 5, 5 times 8 is 40. 0 carry for 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1, uh, 9. So 18 times 40, we're going to have 90 meters. So this will be the distance in the first 10 uh, seconds.
Okay, so we've now come to question C right here. Find the average speed of the object for the whole journey. So the average speed for the whole journey. So we know that speed is given by this formula. Speed is equal to distance over time. Now, we don't have the distance for the whole journey, but we have the distance for the first 20, uh, 10 seconds, which we answered as 90. 90. So let us just find the distance in the in the last five seconds right here. We find the distance for this. Then when we find the distance for this, we add to this 90. That means we have the, the distance for the whole journey. Okay. So this is a triangle. So distance under the triangle is same as area because this is a graph. So I said distance is equal to formula for finding the area of the triangle itself uh, times B times h so from here uh, we are going to say distance is equal to half times b is right here which is difference in time from here up to here 15 minus 10 so b is equal to 5 then h is here meaning from this point up to this point which is corresponding to the 10 there so h is equal to 10 so I'll just substitute half times B is 5, height is 10. So I'll just cancel, I'll say 2 here, 1, 2 into 10, uh, it's 5. So 1 times 5 times 5, my distance is going to be 25 meters. So to find the total distance, where I'll say total distance is equal to I'll get 90, the distance in the first 10 minutes, 10 seconds, plus uh, 25. So, when we add 90 plus 25, we are going to get 5, 9 plus 2, 11, 115 meters. Then we can come back to our formula where we say speed is equal to, where there is distance, we put distance for the whole journey, which is 115, okay? over total time from 0 up to 15 seconds so over 15 so speed is equal to now let us just uh, 115 divided by 15 okay so uh, we need to, to reduce so we are going to we say 5 here it's a 3 5 into 11 it's a 2 remainder 1 so 105 you are 15 5 into 15, it's a 3. So we are going to have 23 over a 3. So speed is equal to uh, 3 into 23 goes there. 7 times, remainder 2 over 3. We say meters per second. This is our answer for speed. So we've come to the end of our session. Thank you so much everyone for having time to view this content. Please, you are free to leave a comment, you advise, okay? And I'll also be able to learn from you. So thank you so much once again. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.